What if we told the flower, don't bloom, and told the birds, don't sing, and told the petals, don't you dare show your tenderness, and told the bee, kissing the sweetest part of the rose's heart, and it's uncomfortable to see love given so freely. And told the stars, don't shine, it'll make someone scared. And told the quivering bunny, holding itself beneath shivering winds, toughen up. And told the morning sun, shining over slowly waking hills, enlivening everything, stop showing off. And told the music within the wind to keep its voice down. These are messages that have been given to our souls. And quite frankly, these ideas really suck. I thought you'd enjoy that. <laughs> so what if we told the flower, don't bloom? and told the birds, don't sing. We were getting ready for our third grade concert. I was standing in the middle of the back row with my tall friend. And the music teacher pointing at us in front of everybody said, during the concert, you two just mouth the words, don't sing out loud, okay? My friend was like, ah. I was mortified. And I closed my mouth. The truth that I couldn't sing, at least that I didn't sing, at least not with my voice, stayed with me. And soon thereafter, I learned to play the clarinet. And I just played until about 15 years later when I finally said to myself, why the beep are you still listening to your third grade teacher? Whose name I don't even remember, thank goodness. <laughs> that shattering of the truth that I could not sing changed my life, changed my career. And actually, no one's been able to stop me from singing for more than 30 years now. Sometimes at the right times, sometimes not at the right times. Oh, well. <laughs> maybe some of you don't have to imagine this scenario, because maybe somebody told you you couldn't sing, or that you weren't smart enough, or that you shouldn't dance or make art or write poetry, or that you weren't athletic enough. If these messages are still rolling around anywhere in you, just do the thing anyway. Just do it. Because we don't try to stop flowers from blooming. We don't try to stop birds from singing. And what if we told the petals, don't show your tenderness? As a kid, I heard, stop crying. So often, it was like a litany. One day in the first grade, I was out of my seat and bouncing around and talking to all the people as per usual, and maybe just a little too much that day. So my teacher covered my mouth with masking tape and got another piece of tape and stuck me to my chair with it. Mm -hmm. So I put my head down on the desk. I knew about Band-Aids, so I took the, the tape off my mouth. I put my head down, and I was just so embarrassed. And when everybody else got up to go to recess, they left me alone there, and I started crying. And our wonderful custodian, Fred, aw, oh, Fred, found me. And I tried super fast to hide my tears because he was going to tell me not to cry. But he was like, wait, pumpkin. Are there more tears in there? Are there more tears lined up inside that want to come out? Because they're important. You have to cry all the tears, pumpkin, or their magic doesn't work, he said to me. 
He said the ones inside, the ones that are left inside that are all stuck, they'll get mad. And you don't want mad tears stuck inside, do you, pumpkin? <laughs> but I was like, who is this man? No adult had ever told me to keep crying. Fred brought me Kleenex, and he explained that the magic of tears is that they work on the heart and the soul, just like antifreeze works in engines. <laughs> I kid you not, the man had a thing full of antifreeze that he had brought in with him, because he was just happening to go somewhere, right, with the antifreeze, because it was October. He said it keeps them from freezing up, it keeps them working proper. Whew, changed my life. I have been putting my body's homemade antifreeze to work for 50 years now. <laughs> Maybe some of you don't have to imagine this scenario because you actually too know what it's like to be told your feelings are wrong, or too big, or too many, or at the wrong time, or that they don't matter. All of the tender petals of the flower are for showing. All of our feelings are for feeling. What if we told the flower don't bloom, and told the birds don't sing, and told the petals don't you dare show your tenderness, and told the bees kissing the sweetest part of the rose's heart, oh, it's uncomfortable to see love given so freely, Although many, many nights a week through seventh grade, eighth grade, probably ninth grade, I called the radio station in my teeny tiny Nebraska town requesting to dedicate Kenny Rogers' song, Lady, to my beautiful debate coach, Kathy. I kid you not. I had no 1977 Nowhere Nebraska word for people like me. I had no word, I had no image, I had no television character, I had no role model for the idea that I could build a life with a woman. Years later, when a woman finally sat across from me and said, I think I'm in love with you, an entire world opened up that was utterly unimaginable and became suddenly possible in living color. Maybe some of you don't have to imagine being told that your particular kind of love makes other people uncomfortable. Maybe you've heard that yourself. But like that bee kissing the rose's heart, Consider this your permission slip to give your love freely as long as you have consent and not to care one little bit about who's uncomfortable seeing it. What if we told the flower don't bloom and told the birds don't sing and told the petals don't you dare show your tenderness? and told the bee kissing the sweetest part of the rose's heart. It's uncomfortable to see love given so freely and told the stars, don't shine. You'll make someone scared. So you know that experience of putting clothes on that just don't fit? Like maybe they're too small or they're too big or they just feel wrong and no matter what you do, they just don't fit. You feel weird in them, right? You don't feel like yourself. It's uncomfortable. So for me, it was an outfit that was just way too small. And while I could wear it, it was painful and it rubbed the wrong way and it often left me raw and irritated. And when I met people, I'd think, yeah, don't look at me. This isn't actually who I am. This is not what I'm supposed to be wearing, no matter what I was wearing. So that feeling, right? 
Imagine being told then, you have to wear this for every day for the rest of your life. This is what you were assigned. And when, you know, when there's no other outfit to wear, we do everything we can to wear the one we were given because naked is not an option. At least not for me. <laughs> I come from Nebraska, I told you this. <laughs> uh, and some of you don't have to imagine. Some of you have lived a similar story. Because the part of, it's part of what it felt like for me to check that box, female. And I did what I could with it for a long time. And I bow in deep gratitude to the very much younger than I am gender non-binary pioneers who came before me, who helped me figure out that I could do the work to take that damn outfit off and I could shine. You have felt them too, these messages that injured your soul. Messages that slowed your creativity or your spark, that dampened the energy of your love that saddled you with jobs and roles and scripts that didn't fit. Messages that told you, you're this and not that. And those messages really do suck. And they hurt. And I'm sorry that you've been hurt in this way too. The pain deserves our tender witness and our attention. And we can offer that to each other. I also know that you too are making your way toward opening and shining and loving. Because actually it turned out that trying to stop you from being yourself was kind of like trying to stop the sun from rising, trying to stop the rain from falling. May we all find people with whom we can sing, show our tenderness, give our love freely, shine, be vulnerable, enliven everything, and raise our voices. And keep masking tape off people's bodies. Amen.